Hey everybody, God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today I want to talk to you about a prayer that I prayed and a principle that I followed that totally transformed my ability to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know if you're like me. I think you are. If you're watching this video, you want to know that your life is bearing fruit and not just any fruit, but fruit that for the kingdom of God, fruit that remains. And it's, you know, Jesus said this in, in uh, John 15 and verse 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. That's good news. God chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So Jesus chose us so that we would bear fruit. And so today I want to talk to you again about a prayer that I prayed that increased my the fruitfulness of my life, and uh, I believe it will increase yours as well. So th again, those of you that are joining me on YouTube, I want you to know that I have a YouTube channel, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. You can go there, and all these videos are uploaded there. I have almost 200 videos there uh, that have just 30-minute videos that give you basic foundational things that will help you to be Know Jesus, walk with Jesus, and be fruitful for Jesus. All right, let's pray, and let's invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us today through the Word of God. I believe you're going to just get a revelation that's going to absolutely rock your boat, all right? So, Father, we thank you once again for the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you and honor you right now, and we ask you to guide us into truth. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your Word. We pray that we'll be transformed by your word today, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, what was this thing? Well, years ago, I found myself praying a prayer in my prayer time. I just kind of started blurting it out over and over again. And uh, I, I obviously had read it somewhere in the Bible and didn't really know where I did. I had to actually go search it. But I was praying this prayer, and the prayer was, Lord teach me your ways. Lord, teach me your ways. Well, I found out that there's several verses in the Bible that talk about walking in God's ways. And so I want to talk to you about some of the things that I discovered about that. But first, I, here it is. I want to first talk, give you the definition of what does it mean? What is, what is ways? You know, teach me your ways. Well, definition of the word ways is a path or a road to follow, a direction to go in, a manner or a habit or a way of life. So if we're going to know God's ways, we need to know the manner of life or the way or the direction uh, that we should go. Now, one of the most common misconceptions in the Christian life is that, that the idea that we just come up with our ideas and, you know, what we think we want to do so we can do some great things for God. And we come up with projects and strategies and things we want to accomplish. Uh, and, and then we ask God to bless those things. But the problem with that is that God doesn't bless what our ideas are. He blesses what his ideas are. And so I, uh, years ago, I began to pray this prayer, Lord, teach me your ways. Now I discovered uh, that God's ways and our ways are not the same. In Isaiah 55 and verses 8 and 9, God's speaking through Isaiah the prophet, and he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, you know, I, it makes sense, right? God is an all-knowing, everywhere present, all-powerful God. He doesn't live in a time-space world. He has no beginning. He has no end. He knows everything that's happened and everything that's going to happen. And so, uh, you know, how many of you understand we're just pea brains, right? I mean, we, we, you know, we may think our biggest thoughts, but our biggest thoughts are nothing compared to the mind of God. And so God says that his ways are higher than our ways. And so it didn't take me long to figure out that God has a better way, Right? Jesus came and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so if we're going to be productive for God's kingdom, we need to understand 
how to walk in God's ways. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. So as I was praying this prayer, Lord, teach me your ways, I, I began to go and I, like, I wanted to figure out, well, where did that verse come from? Teach me your ways. Well, one of the places, I actually, there was two places that I found uh, where two major Bible characters, I mean, these are real people, two major Bible characters prayed this prayer. One was Moses and the other was David. And then I looked at the context of wh why did they pray this prayer? Well, here's the first one, Moses. How many of you know that Moses was raised up by God and he actually probably knew from a young age that God had raised him up to be a deliverer of the people of Israel. So when he had reached the age of 40 years old, he felt the call of God. I got a call in my life. And maybe you feel like this too. I've got a mission that I'm supposed to go on. I've got a thing I'm supposed to accomplish. So Moses realizes he sees the people of Israel suffering and he knows that God has raised him up to be the deliverer. So what does he do? He goes out, he sees an Egyptian beating one of the Israelites, the slaves, and, uh, and he goes over and he kills the guy and he buries him in the sand. And so the next day he goes out and he thinks all the Israel, Israelites and all the Israel slaves are going to be so happy for him. And he sees two of them fighting with each other and he goes up and tells them they shouldn't do that. And they said, are you going to kill us like you killed the Egyptian? And all of a sudden he knows, oh my gosh, the word's out. Uh, they're going to know I just killed this guy. And so it says that he fled into the wilderness and guess for how long? For 40 years. So he goes to the backside of the desert for 40 years. And now, so he's, he was 40 when he left. Now he's 80 years old. He has this encounter with God speaking to him from a burning bush. And it's at that point, uh, by that time, Moses realized what happened was he was trying to do God's will his way. And I just find so many Christians, they, they hear from the Lord or they get a, inspired to, to fulfill a certain ministry or a mission or something that God wants them to accomplish and they don't stop to wait to find out, wait a minute, I need to find out how does God want me to do it. So here we find in Exodus 33, Moses praying this prayer that I was praying. Here's what Moses said. He says, now therefore I pray Moses says, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Show me your way that I might find grace in your sight. What is grace? Grace is the desire, the power, and the ability to do God's will. You can't do God's will apart from the grace of God. And here Moses said, you know what? I just discovered I was trying to do your will my way. It doesn't work. And so then God says, listen, and, uh, he begins to discover and he, that, you know, God has a way. God's ways are not his way. So he begins to pray and say, God, show me your way. Notice this, that I may find grace in your sight. In other words, I'll have, notice he comes back after finding out God's ways and he delivers the people of Israel with these 10 plagues and, and all this manifestation of God's power. And so all of a sudden he taps into God's ways. Now, King David had the same problem. When King David, you know, he uh, was eventually became king. He knew he was anointed to become king, but it was several years before he actually became king. And so finally, after King Saul dies, David is anointed as king of Israel. Well, during Saul's reign, he, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the little box that Indiana Jones was trying to find, right? The Ark of the Covenant was taken away by the Philistines and, and, uh, and, and they stole it from the, from the people of Israel and then they eventually sent it back. But the Ark of the Covenant was never brought back into Jerusalem during the entire reign of King Saul. And so David, when the first thing he does when he becomes king, he says, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, it re represents the presence of God. It's got the mercy seat on it. It's where Moses would talk with God at the, when he would go before God in the tabernacle in the wilderness. And so the Ark of the Covenant represented God's very presence. And so David wants God's presence back in Jerusalem. So what does he do? He decides that he's going to go out and he's going to get the ark. And so he goes out with some oxen and a, a brand new cart, a wooden cart, and he has some priests go out there and he has some, you know, worshipers to go out there and they take the ark and they put it on this 
cart pulled by these oxen. And there were these two priests, and one of them's name was Uzzah. And they were standing on either side as they were pulling the ark along, and David's rejoicing before the Lord. I'm bringing God's presence back into the city. Then it says, and one of the oxen stumbles, and Uzzah reaches up and touches the side of the ark because he thinks it's going to fall off of the off the cart. And it says, God strikes him dead. Well, David is shocked. He says at first he becomes angry. Then all of a sudden he became fearful and he goes away. They take the ark and they put it in another man's house uh, away from Jerusalem. And David goes back and he is trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong. And while he's there, God reveals to him the problem was is that you tried to do my will your way. Yes, I want the ark back in Jerusalem, but you went out and you did it like the Philistines did it with some oxen and a cart. And so David finally figures out that he was trying to do God's will, but he was doing it his own way. So now he goes back and he first he studies, well, what is God's way? Well, God's way was they were supposed to get the priests and they were supposed to carry, four priests were supposed to carry the ark with these poles in the ark on their shoulders. And so they go out, they get the ark of the covenant David brings, again, a big entourage out there. He's dancing before the Lord, and it says the priests begin to carry the ark, and they carry it back into the city, and David is able to restore the presence of God into the city. Well, one of the scriptures that is in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 15, here's what the Lord says, and this is David speaking to the priests. He says, because you did not do it the first time, Because you did not do it the first time, the Lord, our God, broke out against us because we did not consult him about the proper order. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that God has not just a plan for you, but he has a way for you to accomplish that plan. And so what I discovered so many years ago is that I began to pray this prayer, Lord, teach me your ways. Now, I had no idea the adventure that was going to take me on because as I began to pray that prayer, God began to teach me that that there's certain things, there's certain laws in the Bible, I call them spiritual laws in the Bible, that are God's ways of how he wants certain things to be accomplished. Now, let me just go back to David here. Uh, The Bible writes of David in 1 Samuel chapter 18, and it says this, Verse 14, it says, And David behaved himself wisely and in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. When Solomon, now his son, becomes king, God speaks to Solomon and says these words in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 14. He says, so, so here's God speaking to Solomon. He says, so if you... Walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as your father walked, then I will lengthen your days. Now, again, I mentioned about David. I I said there was two people that prayed this prayer. I said that Moses did and David did. In Psalms 25, verses 4 and 5, and also in Psalms 27, verse 11, listen to David. David is praying. He says, show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In Psalms 27, he says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path. Well, there, smooth path. Well, there's a key right there. And if you're, you know, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard, but Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you find yourself trying to do God's will, and it's a major struggle, and you're just falling down all the time and it's just not working out and you you want to throw in the towel and all that, maybe it's because you're trying to do God's will your ways. This is why Jesus told the disciples, listen, I want you to go out. I've given you a great commission. I want you to go preach the gospel and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've taught you and I'll be with you always to the end of the age. But he said, before you go do that, I want you to go wait in Jerusalem until you are filled with power from on high. Why? Because Jesus had told them in uh, John, the gospel of John chapter 14, 15, and 16, he says, I'm going to send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he's going to guide you into all truth. In other words, he's saying to them, 
you, I, here's my will, but I don't want you doing my will your way with your ideas, with your, you know, I've got this vision and I've got this idea and I've, you know, I've got this certain system that I'm going to use. Listen, what you need to do is you need to say, Holy Spirit, guide me into all truth. Well, there's several scriptures that talk about God speaking to the people of God. In Deuteronomy 5, 33, here's what God says. He says, you shall walk in all the ways of the Lord your God that he has commanded you, that you may live and it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you possess. So here again, you know, in America today, we have so many different denominations and so many churches and everybody's got their ideas about how everything ought to be done. But here's what I would advise you to do. I'd advise you to begin to pray this prayer. Lord, teach me your ways. Guide me in your paths. In Psalms 95, it says this, for 40 years, God says, I was grieved with this generation. And I said, It's a people who go astray in their hearts. They do not know my ways. And so God has ways that he wants things done. Now, as I already mentioned earlier in Psalm 55, God's ways are really different from our ways. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, again, it says, For my thoughts, God says, are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so higher are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. In Proverbs 14, and also in Proverbs 16, listen to this. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. You know, sometimes I think God will just let you go your way until you burn out (laughs) and you finally get to the end of yourself and say, what went wrong, God? What's going wrong? And then God says, listen, if you'll just seek me, I'll show you the way. I'll, I'll give you wisdom about how to accomplish what I'm calling you to accomplish. In Proverbs 16, it says this, all, it says this, all the ways of man seem are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the experience. So we always think that our way is the right way. But listen, God's way is the better way. Now, one of the things, I just want to say a couple more things about this, and that is that God's ways are the opposite of our ways. Some of the examples that I see in the Word of God, you've got, listen to these things. You have to give to receive. That's just the opposite of how we think. We think we have to hoard in order to, you know, to gain wealth. Uh, You have to humble yourself to be exalted. You have to lose your life to find it. You have to wait on God to renew your strength. You have to count it all joy when you encounter trials, knowing that it's producing good things in your life. You have to do good to those who do evil to you. (laughs) Come on, that's just the opposite of what our flesh wants to do. Uh, You have to Believe things before you actually see them. You have to bless people that persecute you. You have to give thanks even when things are going bad. So God's ways are the exact opposite of our ways. Now, I want to end by saying this. You can learn God's ways. The Bible talks of Moses in uh, Psalms 103 and verse 7. It says this, he made known his ways to Moses. He made known his ways to to note Moses. In Isaiah 2, it says this. It says, the Lord, in the last days, it says that people will say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. So God says that he can, we can learn his ways. We can grow in his ways. We can gain uh, knowledge of how to do things God's ways. So I just want to end by just sharing two ways that you can grow in God's ways and understanding God's ways. And you already know these, but I'm just going to reemphasize them. First off is that you got to study the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Search the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Here's this Isaiah 55 where he says, my ways are not your ways, right? Let's go look at, take another look at that passage and see what God says. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so much higher are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now listen to the next words. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, 
that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now listen to this. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me void without accomplishing what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So he's saying that, you know, when I first read my ways are not your ways, I'm thinking, yeah, well, that's the truth. I mean, I'm just this pea brain. I just, you know, I'm so limited and you are, you know everything. There's, you know, nothing's ever occurred to God. He doesn't, you know, he's not thinking, boy, I had a new thought today. God knows everything. And I'm thinking, man, and I don't, I don't know anything. And so how am I ever going to know God's ways? Well, you can know God's ways by knowing God's word because God's word is God's ways. Come on, it's real simple. But if you don't know the word, you're not going to know God's ways. So the Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God as a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So here he says that his word out of his mouth was sent and it will accomplish everything that God's called it to accomplish. So I want to encourage you to get into the word of God. Uh, in Psalms 119, it says, your word, listen, remember, we're talking about God's ways. Those of you that are jumping on right now, I'm talking about this prayer that I prayed, Lord, teach me your ways that absolutely changed my life. In Psalms 119, verse 105, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So we're talking about God teaches your ways through the word of God. So here he says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Back then, uh, they didn't have flashlights and uh, you know electrical lighting and all this. What he was talking about is they would have two kinds of lamps. They would have a lamp they could actually put on their feet that, that as they walked across the land at night, they could see the next step where they were to go, the next step they were to make. And then they had another lamp that they would hold up real high, and that lighted the path so they knew the direction they were going in. So the Word of God will show you the next step to take, and it will show you the path that God wants you to follow. The second thing that will cause you to learn God's ways is prayer. That's right, I said prayer. One of the things that uh, Paul tells us to pray is in Colossians chapter 1, Paul says this, he says, I'm praying for you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, with all wisdom, now listen to the next phrase, and spiritual understanding. I want you to be filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, listen to this, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So the two things that I've learned that help me to know God's ways are knowing God's word and spending time in prayer, and especially praying, God, teach me your ways. Well, I want to just end right there. Again, those of you that are uh, c coming to this part of the video, uh, I want to encourage you to watch the whole video. And again, I have a YouTube channel. It's Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. You can go there and get all these teachings. Also, we have several uh, teachings that we do here at the Healing Rooms that are online on the Healing Rooms YouTube channel that you can tune into. We also have... Uh, in-person meetings on Monday night, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, and Thursday morning at 9.30. We invite you to come. We have healing teams. Uh, we have prophetic teams that can minister to you. And also just make sure you sign up for our newsletters because you, you know, we have certain um, uh, events that we do during the year. we got some great events coming up, and you won't want to miss out on them. All right, I want to pray for you that God will teach you his way. So, Father, I pray for everyone that's watching this video and everyone that will watch this video. We say, Lord, teach us your ways. Help us to walk in your path. Help us to do your will, your way. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thanks for joining me. I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.